every fighter pilot wants a good old fashioned dogfight. We haven't graduated yet. Like trying to keep yourself in the game. It's the big mesh. We want to go out, we want to succeed. Old Harp reports under attack by an enemy hind. We get word over the radio, there's a hind out in the objective area. It's a moment we gotta go right now, we're spinning. This is the last chance. Will he like either make it or break it? He's coming right around. Guts track. Cut six one, one way, 30 seconds. We arrive at the merge and we go left to left and we both start conking on G and we see her in the vapors coming off the upside of the wings. Shot five. There's an old saying, talk is cheap, action, that's what matters. What you do in the sky defines who you are in the end. This is the last week of the Marine Corps Premier Weapons School known as WTI. And what these pilots do in their final days when the lights are brightest will define their legacy. As the class faces the most intense and complex evolutions yet, they can all see the finish line ahead. But it will require all they have and more to get there. In the final week of action at Yuma, a combat evolution dubbed AAW-3 puts the F-18 students and the Cobra students shoulder to shoulder. F-18 student Spritz and Cobra student Spaz are mission leaders for their respective divisions. Their mission, strike four targets deep in enemy territory. And in this non-live fire event, instead of fighting an adversary simulating a foreign country, they're fighting American forces. For AW3, the twist on it was that I was now the person trying to figure out how to tackle the problem. It's a little bit of a twist because I was using blue equipment. I was using actual F-35s and actual F-18s. So I just had to look at myself in a mirror and say, if I was trying to defend these targets, what would I do? Then I was able to figure out, what am I gonna do to explore those gaps in their coverage to get in, strike the targets, and then get out. In this evolution, the highly advanced and classified F-35s join the fray, flying on both sides and battling one another. As they do, the plan is for two waves of attacks. First, F-18 students Uncle and Arms will lead an effort to take out as many of the surface-to-air missile systems as they can. Then, the Cobras can come in with air cover from Spritz and Niedemeyer to strike targets in an urban complex dubbed Yodaville. AW3, my role is not super huge. We're going down low, trying to shoot in some anti-radiation missiles. So we're just kind of like in a helping role at that point. After the first wave of attacks, Uncle and Imes at the F-35s head back to refuel. There was still one surface-to-air missile system that was online, and this was like a pretty high-end surface-to-air threat, so we can't just go like flying right past it. It's gonna shoot everybody out of the sky. So we needed specific ordnance and a lot of ordnance to kind of overwhelm this system to take it out. The F-35s finish refueling, and once they do, they want to rush back out to attack the last target on their own. But Spritz steps in and makes a call, ordering them to hold until the full strike force is refueled and can head out together. Spritz did a really nice job calling all stop. And so he called them like, no, negative. Wait for Latch to get back into the fight with all of their air to surface missiles as well. And we're gonna overwhelm this thing with everything that we got. 
As soon as the F-18s got back on station, he called the play for everybody. 99, roll call. Watch. Watch 6 1, min forces met. Striker pushing. Set TOT 2 5. Everyone kind of broke the huddle. Spritz, Niedermeyer, and myself went down low at 1,000 feet all the way into the target area. We were flying in a low altitude environment in order to get very close to the target area before we looked to pop up and deliver our ordnance. Flash attack. Flash 6 1 popping. As we employed, we got our bomb off, met mission success, and then once again attempted to get below the radar horizon. Flash 6 1, you are dead and we actually got shot and died by a simulated surface-to-air threat just before we dropped below the radar horizon. Damn. All right, Gavin, let's pick up a vector north and get out of the fight. It was a pretty bittersweet scenario to know that we were so close to having a nearly perfect, nearly exceptional flight, to know that we died at the very end right after we met mission success. Those Spritz and Niedermeyer were taken out. Their attack run has opened the way for Spaz and the Cobras to strike the final targets, with Easy and the remaining jets providing air cover. The jet guys were fantastic. They backed me up and had full coverage of me the entire time, so I didn't have to get shot down by a different jet, which would have been very unfortunate. Armed and rifle one. The timing lined up really well. The way that as a group, the jet guys went through their initial plan and then how we fell in. Good track. They made sure that they covered us. We had good comms between each other and we had very clear triggers on how it was gonna go. Stand by. Ultimately, we were able to do our mission. We made it all the way there, we struck our targets, and then we made it home. It's mission success for the F-18s and Cobras. And even though Spritz and Niedermeyer were shot down in the end, Spritz seems confident it won't affect evaluation of their performance or hurt their chances to earn an invitation back as WTI instructors. We had mission success. We struck all four targets. I think we got our bombs off before we died. I think so. so I think that's the good news. <laughs> so at least it wasn't all in vain. But overall, I would say it went pretty well. We'll see what the replay says. I definitely saw like some some big boy decisions being made. They did a nice job quarterbacking them. Like uh, coming up with a game plan. No. That was a mission success overall win. The boys definitely needed it. Now having turned this corner. Hopefully they can like kind of ride this trajectory out through Fine X and we can get the W and get these guys home with a patch, but it's looking good so far. I think we overall as a group did really well. Jets hit their TOT, Jets hit their targets. Our guys all hit the targets again. So if anything's left there, it's definitely not anymore. They say that slow and steady wins the race. Well, Spaz has been just that, steady all the way through. Today might have provided the punctuation she needed to establish her as the best of the best and earn an invitation back as a WTI instructor. You guys were pretty much right in trail, and at that same time, uh, Flash was executing their second attacks. They had good effects on the first two GPIs, and they came around for reattacks on the second two. You put your best foot forward for certain events because if you're thinking somebody may or may not be able to hack it in that role, you don't want to derail the training for everybody else. So we put Spaz in that role because we knew she could plan, take information, and come up with a creative solution. Overall looking good for her timeline, and I had final retired around 21.43 for all Venom that were operating in the Odeville. Go team. Today was a huge win for Spaz. But as always, there's little time to celebrate. WTI concludes in only a few days, and the Cobras and Hueys must turn attention to their final mission just around the corner.
Seven weeks of grueling training have pushed the pilots to their brink. But nothing will compare to what comes next. One final evolution, incorporating every type of aircraft on base, each doing everything they've learned during their time in Yuma. It's known as Finex. Last one, so that's a good thing. Very first be over. During Finex, the F-18s will be providing air cover for the Cobras, while they, in turn, provide assault support for a ground force. The Hueys, they'll be spread out to three different locations to set up bases, transport troops, and provide assault support. There's like 27 missions ongoing simultaneously and not the biggest range space in the world. The challenging aspect is the fact that you are integrating in a very, very short amount of time with every other department. You are having to make a plan that is executable, that accomplishes the mission, but it's that integration in a very short amount of time that creates the greatest challenge, in my opinion, of Finex. Story yeah, time. Before we get out to the plane, yeah. can you pull up a copy of the DSM training rules on your tablet so we can go over it with everybody? <laughs> <laughs> this is the last chance for students to prove themselves worthy, not only of graduating, but more importantly, being invited back as a WTI instructor. I'm going to be going out to the north objective area. We're going to work on setting up multiple expeditionary advanced bases and then continuously moving them farther north. This is the last chance. We'll like either make it or break it. I'm flying with Zika for the last one. He's the department head. That last impression is the standing impression. Hopefully, don't mess it up too bad. Oh, yeah. While Chopper hopes for a clean flight, fellow Huey student Tinkle looks to reestablish himself as the best of the best. His major misstep in week two of flight phase led to a harsh debrief. That debrief will stay top of mind, mostly because Tinkle will be flying with instructor Wolf, the man who leveled the criticism. It's going to be a really big mission and I was looking forward to some extent, like almost redeem myself a little bit. See you guys later. Thanks. What's up? Yeah. In the Cobra division, two students have separated from the rest as the course has intensified. Spaz and Carmex. While Spaz delivered big in the last evolution, Carmex is given the role of air mission commander for Finex. The stakes couldn't be higher. Ultimately, what that requires is that I know where everybody's going, what they're doing, how many people they're taking, and then I roll people to different places. It's a big responsibility. It is daunting, and especially when you're so close to being done, you kind of just want to be done and, you know, ride off into the sunset, but that wasn't the case for me. Two, zero, one, eight, two. I got put on tap to be the escort flight lead. So basically, I was responsible for protecting either Ospreys, CH-53s, Hueys, whoever's going in, and then basically still just supporting the guys on deck when they get there. It was really unique being able to work with everyone. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants it to go well. So it was less nerves. It was more of just excitement to do it because it's the big mesh. Like, we want to go out, we want to succeed, we want to do well, and everyone playing wants to win. All right. Everyone knows that Finex is the big mission and what it means for reputation and graduation. But for the F-18 students, staying on point isn't as easy as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super tired, yeah. Everyone thinks graduation is two days off, so you're kind of trying to keep yourself in the game. We haven't graduated yet and still got to go out and execute and do these pretty, you know, complex evolutions. I think that all of the, the, uh, the adversary aircraft are 
F5s from the 401 guys, and we'll see if they can um, see if they can keep up. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure. We got a Top Gun grad right here, so <laughs> we'll he's, done the, he's done this once or twice. Yeah. Every fighter pilot like wants to go to the merge and have a good old-fashioned dogfight, <laughs> you know, getting in close and personal. A merge is where both aircraft arrive at the same piece of sky and in very close proximity to each other, and now you are both turning as hard as the aircraft will allow you to turn to try to gain a, an angular advantage to employ a weapon that you have to win. Caffeine. Caffeine is good. I, I held off on the five-hour energies until the last couple of days. I didn't take any five-hour energies until these past few days. It's probably the most fun that we have in the jet. That would obviously be a great way to end it, is to end at the merge, you know, with a gun's kill on an F5. <laughs> so, like, kids are pretty tired by now, because it's been a long course, so. Uh, it's just keeping your head in the game and sticking it out to the finish line, you know? Really, this is a moving defensive counter air. There's a bunch of helicopters and Marines on the deck that are moving forward in the battle space and then moving back. And the whole time, we just have to provide kind of that persistent air coverage so they can have that freedom of maneuver. Think uh, localized air superiority is what we call it. So we're gonna own the sky for 45 minutes to three hours. All right. next begins, the students will have to contend as usual with the adversary squadron. But today, F-5s aren't the only adversary aircraft they'll face. Everybody focuses on, hey, where are the fighters? And they forget about the attack helicopters that are out there that can do a lot of damage. And oh, by the way, it's easy to forget about them when you're planning. And oh, by the way, they can be pretty tough to see and then get really close and personal to shoot down assault aircraft and, and create quite a bit of havoc. JT does a phenomenal job of being that player in the problem. That's right, JT, AKA Ivan, will be joining the fray in a Russian combat helicopter called the Hind. As the students contend against Ivan and everything else in the kitchen sink, Spaz sees the opportunity she's been waiting for. I've been wanting to fight Ivan the entire class. That was my only goal of leaving this class. Like, for Fur Finex, the one thing I didn't get to do. 7 Land Shark. Bullpark reports under attack by an enemy hive. We're sitting there, getting ready to launch. We get word over the radio that, guess what? There's a hind out in the objective area. It just attacked our guys to the north that we were going to support. I was so excited. I said, Nelma, we gotta go right now. We're spinning. Spaz, without hesitation, called for the aircraft to spin up, and she's like, I'm calling it, we're launching. That's why she impresses so much sometimes. Spaz, she's got a plan. We're hunting our way through the terrain, looking for Ivan. And lo and behold, Spaz found Ivan. Jinx. Guns. Fox 2, Ivan. Gun, gun, gun. right, Fox right. Gun. I actually was the first one to find him. Gun on Ivan. We were able to get the jump on him, happened to see him coming around terrain. We rolled out and immediately went nose to nose with him. Got some flex gun on it. Ivan's no more. Ivan, you are dead. Kill move north. He said, yeah, you guys killed me. 
we just hear splash one Ivan. It was like, nice. Hell yeah, don't gotta worry about that. Due to Spaz's desire to push the threat and not let it push us around, and her decisiveness led to a pretty successful engagement, which was fun to see. That was my highlight of fight X for me, was actually getting to go fight Ivan. So it was really cool to beat him. Spaz did what she set out to do. Killing Ivan during Finax is a strong statement so close to graduation. The kind of statement that draws attention with everyone watching. But in the skies above the Cobras, the air-to-air -air fight is still raging. Sniper 5, redeploy north lane. That's, that's great. So Rico in the tactical training range facility kind of directed me what to do. Sniper 5, Comrade, target North Group. Sniper 5, targeted. It just so happened that the manning of the aircraft on station was such that we were able to overwhelm them. Sniper 5, North Group, retire. Retarget groups in the open in the vicinity of Site 50. I heard, oh, the brick wall is down, which means there's no top cover for the guys. And we're, we're like, oh, We bust her back over there. When we finally do get there, there's two bad guys that are five miles from what we call the mission fail line. Red strike package pushing. If they get there, they're gonna drop bombs on all your friends on the ground. Box three record. We shoot them, and I hope it gets there in time. Killed record. It was like a split second thing where we cleaned them up right before they were gonna like drop bombs on, on all of our friends. Jalen, rate that cap. A big win for us personally. It always feels good to get some kills in the air to air arena, not die, and ultimately have a good last event. So ending on a high note was really nice. F-18 students Uncle and I'm scored their kills with long range missiles an incredible feat in their final test. But for fellow F-18 pilot Spritz and Niedermeyer, the long range fight is about to get a whole lot closer. What do you know it? Here come more fighters that we need to take out. Sniper's push. Last 6-1, Bonsai, North Group. Last 6-1, Cali 1, 12 o'clock, 3 miles, level. Sniper 1, Cali 1, left 11, 3 miles, 10 high. Our goal is always to make it to a merge. And if you can get to a merge, then you really get to go back to what you're good at, which is dogfighting. And we can win in some way, shape, or form. Flat 6 one anchored, rock, one three five sixty 60 engaged. Spritz and Niemeyer just have to kill and clean up this bandit before he either kills them or blows through and starts attacking everything that we're trying to protect. They get in there, he's at 40,000 feet, get themselves all the way up to the moon there. We arrive at the merge and we go left to left and we both start pulling and honking on G. merge with the guy, they end up taking the fight downhill. And we see the vapors coming off the upside of the wings. The G-forces are starting to pull down on us. And I don't think Gavin expected it. Because <laughs> I think he was a little bit, you know, pulled down into his seat. And I start hearing some grunting and some noises back there as he's trying to keep the blood flowing in his body. Pull like six and a half Gs going downhill and F5 is uh, pretty rough. And all of a sudden, we're turning with this F5. Shot five. Last six one, Fox three, threat group. Last six one, kill threat group. And we get the final shot and the kill. It was great to see that they recognized, like, this is time to, like, go to the merge, put the knife in the teeth, and let's get after it. And they did that. I think it was a good finish uh, to the course, recognizing, like, when to go in and guns a-blazing. 
Advisor, left 6162, retired fuel. It is what it is. If I was out there, I wouldn't have lost, but. Last one's done. It was fun. We uh, kicked some butt, beat up some F5s. They didn't know what they were doing, so pretty much Spritz dominated them. He's a BFM king. He's good. Maybe a little bit of club action. Oh, That's yeah. if we end up giving you your patch. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, you guys all know this folder? Very glad to have that over with, I'll be honest. Yeah. Mission accomplished. So did he pass or what? Yeah, I guess. I'll take it. We'll just keep lowering our standards <laughs> until they can beat up. It's good. It's a long one. It's the last one though, so feels good to have that one done. For Huey student Tinkle, the road to the finish was bumpy at times. But he did finish strong and earned redemption in the eyes of his instructor, Wolf. Nothing but improvement, and that's what we want to see of all of our guys. So uh, Tinkle's right where he needs to be on glide slope. He's going to be a good senior instructor to go back to the fleet and, uh, and work on his guys in a similar fashion. Shutting down, being done was just kind of nice. Seven weeks has officially gone away. It feels like I just checked in here yesterday. Time travel is legitimate when you're here. I'm not gonna believe it until they actually give me a patch. So until that point, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trust it until I can put it on my actual flight suit. It feels good, almost just like a sense of accomplishment, and then just relief at that same point. The journey to this moment comes with a lot of emotion and analysis, but for Chopper, this isn't the time for reflection. I'll say you gotta wait till the end, right? So graduation isn't tomorrow. I'll wait, I'll wait till then, till I got my final feelings. The pilots of WTI have endured a gauntlet few ever face. They put their lives on the line, pushed the very boundaries of their abilities, and reached the end of this grueling program. Following the fine XD brief, there's no doubt they've earned a moment to celebrate. But despite the achievement, it remains to be seen who has passed muster and earned the WTI patch at graduation. And who will receive the top honor? An invitation to return as a WTI instructor. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to come here and to recognize the hard work and achievement of the fleet's newest weapons and tactics instructors. Over the past seven weeks, these WTIs have been put through a grueling course to ensure their success as instructors for their units, preparing them for the full range of military operations. To the graduates, congratulations on earning your patch and your designation as a weapons and tactics instructor. Everybody's expected to struggle here, but when you walk across the stage, you've graduated and you now are a weapons and tactics instructor, so it's a pretty good feeling to work all the way through and get to that point. Captain McKenzie Spache. It feels good. It's a goal I had for four years, and I finally got it. Now it's, can I continue to live up to the expectation that comes with that? There is an instantaneous belief as soon as someone sees that patch that you know what you're talking about. And so the rest of my time is gonna be living up to that standard. Just wanting to drive that forward and make sure that every person who comes after me is better than me. Otherwise I'm not doing my job. Captain Piper Thaler. I was happy with how I performed. I left it all on the table. It weighs heavy on me, heavier than I thought it would. Knowing you're the standard bearer, it's a big responsibility. I would like to come back as an instructor if they choose to have me. <laughs> In the Cobra division, Major Nelms believes both Carmex and Spaz prove their mettle and both deserve the honor of an invitation to return as WTI instructors. I think both of them have the right personality and the right mindset to, to do well here. I would consider absolutely coming back the opportunities you get here are 
second to none. Basically, you're at the leading edge of coming up with what the fleet's gonna continue to do. So that would be a really unique opportunity. Captain Andrew Hitchens. In the Huey Division, all students will graduate and earn their patch. It's a testament to this class and the instructors who led them. It's a huge sense of accomplishment to make sure that a full class makes it through. We've had some that, that they haven't, and you never enjoy sending people home, but you also need to make sure that that patch means something when people wear it on their shoulder, that it's not watered down, and that the people who graduate, graduate because they should be graduating. Captain Eric Schinkel. The things that have always set Schinkel apart, his thoughtfulness, his maturity, and ability to learn and think through problem sets, set him apart here. Captain John Wilkins. It's a great honor to be able to wear that patch. It's like the pinnacle of qualifications and your skill and competency as a pilot. While the Huey class earns high praise across the board, the pilot who stood out above the rest was clear to the instructors. Chopper showed us that he was punching above his weight when it came to what we expected based on qualifications and pre-certifications that he had and what he was actually able to accomplish. Coming here, it's by far been the best Marine Corps training that I've ever got. Nothing else even really compares. Our next graduates are from the TAC Air Department under the leadership of Lieutenant Colonel Brott. After a course filled with peaks and valleys, it's the moment of truth for the F-18 Tactical Air students. Uncle, I'm Spritz Niedermeyer. They took a bit of a dive there as we started flight phase. Things were not going super great, but about halfway through, they showed an improving trend. And by the end of it, no doubt in my mind, everyone deserves the WTI patch and, and go back to their squadrons and hold that position as a training officer. Captain Gavin Jernigan. It is a good feeling to become a WTI graduate and know that you achieved one of the highest qualifications possible. Captain John Baum. It feels great. It also feels very relieving to not have to wake up at six o'clock tomorrow morning. I intend to sleep in. Looking back on everything that we did, it's like, wow, that was kind of me for a while, but ultimately it feels good and I know that I learned a lot. And I'm looking forward to like taking that back and hopefully force feeding it to other people. Captain Thomas Lauderdale. Despite some struggles, decided to let me press on. You know, I guess it's kind of on me now to go pay that forward. 224, the Bengals, they're the F-18 squadron that's been supporting us, and I'm gonna go back and be the training officer for them. So, yeah, moving on. Captain William Odell. I had a certain standard that I set for myself of my expectations of what I wanted, and that was the threshold that I wanted to achieve. This is the top 1% of the top 1%. Please join me in congratulating these new weapons and tactics instructors. Though all F-18 students graduated, the honor of being invited back as WTI instructors is reserved for just two based off of the way they see things and their mission planning, we ended up giving an ask back to Spritz as well as Uncle. Even though he was down on himself and, and struggling, sometimes it's good to see that because it means like they actually care about what they're doing. So the staff in unison, we all decided like we liked what we saw out of the two of them. So we gave them the ask back to be instructors with us here at the course in the distant future. So we'll see, we'll see if they wanna come back and, and hang. <laughs> Ultimately, the goal is to get invited back to be an instructor, because that means that not only did you excel as an individual, they recognized your instructional capacity to then teach the next group of high-level instructors. You need some sort of credibility in order to be an instructor of instructors. I think that that is ultimately the crowning achievement right there.
Very few of us will ever get the chance to achieve true greatness. But we all know what it looks like when we see it, don't we? These combat pilots have clearly reached those heights. Graduating from this weapon school is a moment that no Marine pilot will ever forget. It's more than just a patch. It's an achievement, a real achievement, and the beginning of something much greater. So maybe next time you hear someone talk about fighter pilots, you won't just think of a movie. <laughs> Instead, maybe you'll think of this WTI class and the real feats that they achieved when we were all watching.